In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. As we continue, dear faithful, the Institute of Christ the King Sovereign Priest's 40-day national prayer campaign, let us reflect on the kingship of Christ. We all know and acknowledge that Christ is King because He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn. For in Him were created all things in the heavens and on the earth, things visible and things invisible. All things have been created through and unto Him, and He is before all creatures, and in Him all things hold together. In the encyclical titled Quas Primas by Pope Pius XI, the Holy Father teaches us that Christ has by His very nature all the rights of a king over all of creation. And what does that mean to us, dear faithful? If Christ is king, being creator of all, then that means that we must recognize his dominion in all things. That means that we must serve him above everyone else, above all things. To have him as our light and our leader, to have him as our guide for our every step. In addition, our Lord is King because He has bought us back by His own precious blood shed for us upon the cross, in whom we have our redemption, the remission of our sins. He reigns from the cross, and on that cross He was proclaimed King in the Hebrew, in the Latin, and Greek languages. St. Paul teaches us that we have been bought at a very great price. And that means, dear faithful, that we are not our own. And in this world, dear faithful, that has gone cold in charity and away from truth, we cannot fall into the temptation of the evil one and accepting his worldly allurements. Because if we do, we give ourselves back to the one from whom Christ set us free. The evil one, Satan, said in ancient past and forevermore, non serviam, I will not serve. Let us not do the same, dear faithful, by refusing to serve Christ our King for fear of the sacrifices he asks of us. This would be such an ingratitude for all of the saving help and grace that he has given to us up to the present time. How often we may fail to be grateful to our king when we fasten the nails and thorns into his most sacred body, whenever we serve ourselves into sin. Have courage, dear faithful. Have joy to serve our king and recall the many others before us. Let us recall especially the martyrs, the martyrs of Russia, of Spain, of Mexico, who died crying out, Long live Christ the King! Let us remember, dear faithful, this battle cry of our holy ancestors, that we may continue to be worthy and a worthy member of God's Church founded in the precious blood of our Savior. St. Paul explains that our Lord is the head of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the first place. For it has pleased God, the Father, that in him all his fullness should dwell, and that through him, he should reconcile to himself all things, whether on the earth or in the heavens, making peace through the blood of his holy cross. That means then, dear faithful, that we are the living members of Christ's mystical body. St. Paul tells us that 
our Lord has reconciled us in his body of flesh through his death to present us holy and undefiled and irreproachable before him. For we form one single body and should then love one another. We should help one another. We should serve one another with Christ the King as our head. Let us recall the gospel passage where Pontius Pilate asked our Lord, Art thou the king of the Jews? Just like the modern world, the truth was set before Pontius Pilate in front of his person. But yet Pontius Pilate had eyes and did not see, and ears and did not hear. Because the world is so much absorbed in its materiality and finiteness, it fails to see the great wonders of our Lord, the King. God has proven his holy and regal power in the holy and sacred scriptures. Through the many works he wrought to cure the sick, the demons that he drove out, the sea that was made calm, the people that he resurrected from the dead. And since then, after our Lord's kingly ascension into the highest of heavens, we have witnessed through history the many triumphs of his church through the glorious martyrs that watered this earth with their faithful and holy blood triumph over the extirpation of heresies such as Gnosticism, Arianism, and Mohammedanism, over the Lutheran revolution, over rationalism, liberalism, and modernism. But it seems that the more our Holy Mother, the Church, tries to safeguard us from harm and error, the more and more people have been resistant in accepting the truth of Christ as King. We see in our secular authorities seeming to deny Christ and his place of authority over all of us as our sovereign leader in all secular and spiritual matters. The ongoing denial of this holy truth is a sin against the Holy Ghost. We return then to the great Pope Pius XI, who reminded us again in his encyclical Quas Primas that it would be a grave error to say that Christ has no authority whatsoever in civil affairs. In addition, the Holy Father had said that our Lord's empire includes not only Catholic nations, not only baptized persons, but also all those who are outside of the Christian faith, as truly the whole of mankind is subject to the power of the cross and the power of Jesus Christ. In him, our Lord, is the salvation of the individual. In him is the salvation of society. Neither is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given to men whereby we must be saved. The Lord, our God, is the author of happiness and true prosperity for every man and for every nation. And that is why, dear faithful, if we see today that human society and our country is tottering towards its fall, it is because it has no longer a secure and firm and solid foundation in Christ. That is why, dear faithful, it is so important now and always to pray for the reign of Christ, and especially as together as the family of the Institute of Christ the King, this 40-day novena in honor of his sovereign kingship. That is why Pope Pius XI established such a powerful and strong feast day to remind all of us of Christ's kingly and sovereign power. Similar to why we celebrate Corpus Christi in order to stir up in us the reverence, respect, and devotion 
of the most blessed sacrament and also why we celebrate the feast of our Lord's most sacred heart to encounter the effects of the evils of Jansenism and its severity by acknowledging our Lord's infinite charity and profound mercy. We now need to acknowledge all the more Christ's kingship in a world that has rejected his authority. Every year, dear faithful, we are privileged to have celebrate the feast of the kingship of Christ, which is celebrated on the last Sunday of October in its traditional placement in the Roman calendar to signify that Christ's reign begins, has begun, and will continue for all eternity. Pope Pius XI clearly stated in so simple of an explanation that when once men recognize both in private and in public life that Christ is king, society will at last receive the great blessings of real liberty, well-ordered discipline, peace, and harmony. With the spread and universal extent of the kingdom of Christ, men will become more and more conscious of the link that binds them together, and thus many conflicts will be resolved or prevented, or at least their bitterness will be diminished. In addition to our daily recitation of the Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the act of contrition and the prayer to St. Michael during this 40-day prayer campaign that Christ may reign, let us pray, dear faithful, during our free time, the following prayer. O Jesus Christ, I acknowledge Thee as universal King. All that has been made has been created for Thee. Exercise all Thy rights over me. I renew my baptismal vows renouncing Satan and all his works and pomps, and I promise to live as becomes a good Christian. And above all, I pledge myself, as far as in me lies, to make the rights of God and thy church prevail. Divine heart of Jesus, I offer thee my actions, little as they worth, as they are worth, that all hearts may do homage to thy sacred kingship, and that thus the reign of thy peace may be established throughout the world. Amen. Christus vincit, Christus regnat, Christus imperat. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs>